गुड इवनिंग सर गुड इवनिंग Good evening, everyone. Uh, could someone confirm? Uh, am I audible to you? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, madam. Good evening, friends. Once again, we have with us Dr. George Gabriel Richard Roy, an assistant professor of yeah. computer science. working in the department of, of uh, information technology he is also coordinating the department of uh, bachelor of vocation software development in st joseph's college he is a rich research researcher who has completed his phd in blockchain technology who is uh, Ms. dr jaj is a talented professor not only in technology but also in designing that is the reason why we have dr george with us today dr george has been deployed for ma many works in the college such as nac relevant works also for designing works dr george as i told you dr george is talented in much other activities so such a talented person is a resource person today for the session he will be handling us on the tricks of designing in for using photoshop as well as he will touch upon the user interface design using photoshop dr george on behalf of the department of computer science and all the learners here who have gathered here welcome you dear george the floor is yours thank you so much sir thank you so much for the introduction um hi good evening participants i'm very happy to be here on this occasion to talk to you to share what i know about photoshop and uh, as what uh, dr vimal told me um i he told me that you're all experts already experts here in this photoshop and you all know all these things so how to go about here and then photoshop uh, what i want to share here is that there are some things that you may or may not know about photoshop that what i found it is useful when i'm designing stuff so what i'm going to be displaying here is the let me share my screen okay. please forgive me if it's a little bit slow because i'm uh, recording and uh, displaying it at the same time and as you know that photoshop takes a lot of memory i'll be uh, it will be a little bit delay for you yeah so what i'm going to show you here is uh it's adobe photoshop 2020 okay and we are going to start uh, we're going to see all these tools like not all these tools in detail like what i found was new and what what things can be done i've just got a list like uh, we will talk about some dr uh, george sorry yes. to interrupt you yes, dr george are yes, you sir. recording sir just, yes just yes sir is recording you, you. yes sir recording sir thank you recording thank you so much and uh, where we will have some kind of selecting masking i'll show you how to do some double exposure easy steps to do double exposure photographs uh, some blending options how to choose different colors for your documents and uh, we'll go into ui designing also the ui designing or how you can use flat rounded icons all these things so if you uh, have any questions of how you want to do a particular effect or something you can please ask me and if possible i'll uh, tell you how to do it and i'll show you how to do it so first things first we'll uh, start with this uh, is my screen visible to you yes sir yeah thank you so 
so what we have here now is this uh, photoshop version 2020 uh, the recent version is 2021 which is uh, cc creative cloud they have a subscription basis and uh, if you're going to purchase photoshop it is going to be uh, like subscription for every month or for every year and what we have here is, is the college uh, account and uh, photoshop is a good tool but it's expensive yes but you can also if you have a college account if you have a college you can ask them to purchase a college account for that for y'all and you can use uh, photoshop so due to memory constraints i'm going to create a relatively a small image like an a5 document so as you all know the, when you create new when you click on new you have this dialog box this dialog box i hope everybody is working on windows because the options yes, are sir. yeah the options are different in the macintosh so this is a windows machine the first thing what you have to do is you you have to name your document what document are you going to do so for example sample one i'm naming it so here we have all these uh, uh, presets, right? So what I'm going to use is international paper. I'm going to use A5 because it doesn't take a lot of RAM. And uh, here the resolution. Do you know what the resolution is? Please give me some input because uh, I, I'm, I'm assuming that you know all these things. So do you know what this resolution means? The resolution 300 pixels per inch anybody can answer so, so it's a standard uh, resolution for all it's a standard resolution who is that ajay james i, I think i can i know the truth is yeah is it it is ajay james okay uh here this 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 resolution right um you know there are different types of media right you have uh, print media you have this digital media which you're going to see on the screen all these things are there so if you're going to use something which is going to be displayed on the screen, uh, then you can have around 75 to 150 pixels per inch. Okay. Imagine that your screen is made up of tiny dots. Your screen is made up of tiny dots. And uh, here in, I'll show you in pixels. So it's like 874, 874 dots here and 1240 dots. So if you multiply them 874 and 2040 that is that means that there are so many dots on the screen and what how uh, you you know about rgb cymk all these colors right yeah i hope you know that yeah, just yes, sir, let yes, me sir. give you a brief rundown of that rgb is for digital screens alone because the screens are made up of each pixel is made up of a combination of red green and blue yeah and the CYMK is normally used for print media. CY, CMYK, sorry, CMYK is used for print media. The reason why, because it, they have four major cartridges of what ink, uh, the combination of inks like cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. So right now, we're going to concentrate more on uh, digital media. And if anybody wants to know about print media also, we'll do. Because there's going to be a, a considerable amount of uh, color change when you go on for print media versus uh, RGB colors. So this is why I was talking about resolution. Resolution means the, the clarity, how it is going to be, like how clear the image is going to be. And one thing is, as you increase this resolution, for example, if you put it for 300, 300 pixels, the size is going to increase. Okay, the size is going to increase. And if you put it uh, like 150, the size will decrease. And when you're working on your document, uh, you won't find that much difference. So 150, 75 to 150 will do for a digital screen. So I'm going to settle for 150, and uh, this is a this is an A5 document, which is half of an A4 do, uh, A4 document. So we go and put this, and then we have this background colors white. That is, you know, all these things. So I'm naming mine. It is sample one, and first thing that you have to do is you go to save it. You have to save it. Okay. So here I'm saving it as a sample. Uh, saving it here. Immediately. Immediately after creating the base variant, I'm saving it here. Okay. So this is the first thing that you have to do. 
name your PSD file, save it in a console in a folder where you have named everything. And uh, I'm going to use a landscape version. That will be good. So when you get this de default thing, it will be like a background. Okay. If you have a background, just double click this lock and it will become into a layer. Okay. It will become into a layer, layer zero. So you, we can start working onto it. We can start painting onto it. We can start doing all type of things. So I, I know, I think you know about uh, all these types of uh, things. And what, we, what I'm going to show you now is, is a few new feature in Photoshop. Um, Hopefully, most of you would have known about this, but this feature is very, very useful when it comes to selecting things for me. So I have a small folder which is which contains a lot of um, images that I want. So I'm taking this one. So you you know right? You can uh, go to file, open the open the uh, open whatever file that you want, and you can add it here, or you can go to the particular folder where you have stored all those files that you need for your particular project, whatever project that you're going to do upon, and then you can drag it from outside and you can drop it inside. Okay, so here we have this image, uh, and then it works. Okay, it does. So here, what we have here, this is a smart object. This is a smart object. You can't do lots of operations with a smart object directly. If you want to change it into a normal object, what you have to do is you have to go here, right click and rasterize the layer. Rasterizing the layer will erase all smart things which you have and it will become a normal layer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut uh, John Wick off this frame. So normally what we'll do is we'll use these uh, tools, the lasso tool or we'll use a pen tool, all these things. But Photoshop has a new, uh, Photoshop 2020 onwards has a new tool called Select Subject. Uh, I think you uh, you would have known about this, Select Subject. See this, this button right here. All I have to do is I have to click on Select Subject and wait for some time. Immediately, I can get, see as you can see, immediately the subject has been selected. Of course, I have to do some kind of touching up work with it, but instead of spending like has in uh, like 10 minutes or 20 minutes of subject selecting the subject and erasing things i can just um create a subject see now i have the subject alone with me uh, of course i have to do some touching up and then that's fine tuning that i can do the fine tuning afterwards but how easy it is see just selecting the subject with just one single click uh do you know about this uh, have you already already tried this selecting the subject like this yeah okay so this is how you can select a subject almost instantaneously it it works with almost all the subjects but you need to do some kind of fine tuning for example this one is a little bit difficult this dog is sitting in uh, in a bunch of uh, grass so this will be a little bit difficult because this grass also will be selected um, but it is possible it will select the subject but it won't be as good as uh, you doing it manually, but later on you can do some touching up. See, the dog's legs are not selected, but it has selected the dog. Okay. So that is it for uh, for selecting subjects. So here, as I've already selected this subject, there's something called a puppet wrap tool. Do you know about puppet wrap? Uh, okay, yeah, let me just let me just tell you about this. Uh, so here we have a, a cartoon, a cartoon boy. And what if you want to make some, uh, you can make animations in Photoshop. You know that, right? You can make animations, you can make small videos in Photoshop. So what if you want to make a small animation like this uh, guy moving around and all these things. And uh, all you got is just one image. You can do things. You can, you can animate this guy by using something called a puppet trap. So, for example, I have this uh, small boy right here, and uh, because he's in a white background, uh, it's not visible. But I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this boy from the background using the select subject, selecting the subject. See, 
Now I'm going to cut this boy. Cut this boy from the background. The reason I was not able to do it is because it is still a smart object. So I'm going to rasterize this layer, cut this from this layer, and paste it somewhere. So here I have layer 2. Layer 2, I'm going to name it as a boy. Make sure that you name your layers so you don't you can erase unnecessary layers which will slow down your computer because even unused layers will cost you RAM. The whole file is called a scratch disk. Have you heard of a scratch disk? A scratch disk is where your files work along. When you are working working with this, there is a small uh, sorry, there is a space where these files get temporarily stored. And that size is really, really huge. It's like uh, 100 GB or something for a normal file like this. So the lesser the layers that you have, it is more much better that you get nicer feedback from the RAM. So I'm saving it. I have this boy here. This boy is right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to edit. I'm going to select something called Puppet Wrap. Okay, that's called something called Puppet Wrap. See, perspective wrap, puppet wrap, all these things are great tools, uh, but they are used very uh, seldom. They don't, they are not used a lot. So what I'm going to use, I'm going to use puppet wrap. Puppet wrap here, you can have lots of points. So I'm going to add points here. One point here. One point near is knee. One point at his elbow. One point at the center. His elbow. The face. So when you create this, uh, these points, you can use all, all the keyboard, uh, all button on the keyboard to select it. Select it. When I press Alt, you can see that there is a circ, uh, there is a small circle around it. Yeah, you can. Yes, sir. Yeah, you can turn this part alone. See, can you see this? You can turn this part alone. Select yes, this, and you can. You can turn this part along. For example, if you want the whole, uh, let me just, let me just cut this. Okay. See what I can do? I can I can twist this this guy's leg. It's just a two D image, but I can twist this guy's leg. And uh, selecting this one, and I can bring this guy's arm down. Yeah, select this face. I can make him do this. When I click on this, see, this is done only based on a 2D image. See, you can even do it on uh, photos also, but photos you have to be a little bit perfect. The cutting should be a bit perfect. I'll show you how it is done on John Wick here. Okay. So same thing, edit, go to puppet wrap, select which points will be considerably moving around. I'm choosing this, 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 head, body, yeah. So just go select which one you want, select this. You can rotate this apart. It doesn't work. Everything is, is a single object, so it doesn't work. If it's separate, you can make it work along. So if this picture, yeah, yeah, two legs is separate. If it's a separate, separate, yeah, we can move single leg along. Yeah, yeah, yes, sir, yes, sir. We can see, we can move the single leg along. Uh, I'll try to get a picture which is uh, separate. Let me let me check. Sir, I think this option is not in CS3 Photoshop, no? Yes, ma'am. This is not available in CS3. It is available in uh, Photoshop, the recent version. Which is 2020. Okay. 2020 onwards, you can have this feature. Okay. In CS3, it is not available. E even now, it is like distorted, but you can uh, do things with this. Yeah. So this is puppet wrap, and there is this uh, 
perspective wrap also i'll show you how perspective wrap works let me delete all these things for the pictures i'll see for any buildings so for perspective wrap what i'm going to do is i'm going to select perspective wrap it will ask me to draw some planes so i'm going to draw some planes here it will ask me to ch change this to find the points So now I can uh, click on it. Click on what? See, I can walk walk the whole image like this. This one can be done for buildings or any uh, objects that you want to be changed. The perspective warp. The whole thing can be changed, the rest of it can be cut. So I says, because I didn't cut this whole image, it can be changed to different things. When I cut it, it would be better. So this perspective warp, warp also works. So let's say for instance, next thing what I, I want to do is I want to color this object. I want to color this object and you have something which is uh, somewhere else. I find some uh, nice image, for example, a landscape. Um, yeah, let's, let's take this image. Uh, let's say that I want to color this telescope into this color, this uh, pink color. Normally what we'll do is we'll take a screenshot, we'll take this image, we'll drop it into this and we'll have to take this color dropper tool, this is, uh, yeah, color dropper tool, select this and then we'll have to change it. But right now what we can do is, see, take, take this eyedropper tool, eyedropper tool, select some color over here, okay, select some color over here the most important thing is that you have to minimize photoshop you have to shape photoshop that whole window like this half of this photoshop half of the photoshop half of the browser select this eyedropper tool select somewhere over here just drag it outside can you find the color changing over here at this place look at this place okay i'm i'm dragging it over here and can you see the color changing over there see it's changing it's changing into green, whatever color is outside. I'm not doing anything else. I'm just dragging the color eyedropper tool and I can do this. See, for example, when I get a correct uh, good pink with this. Yeah, now I can do what, whatever selection I want to do. For example, I'll take this magic. See, it's done. The color of it's changed. So this is how you can use a eyedropper tool to get colors from outside also. Okay. Uh, so is there anything that any uh, design that you want that because see I'm go I'm telling this on based on what I've experienced. Is there anything that you want to know like any tip that you want to know? Is there any request or something that you will not you want to know because photoshop is like 
an ocean there's so many things that you can be done on in photoshop and uh, we don't have a lot of time also left because i have lots of lots of things to do i mean lots of things to tell you and if there is any kind of uh, request i'll try to do that also so um if there's any request please let me know i'll uh, try to do that and next thing is you must have seen some kind of double exposure effect uh double exposure effect in the sense you'll have one image here uh, one um, normal image and it will be filled with the background of another image for example here i have this doll and uh, this doll will have some of the scenery in in it have you know have you seen that effect anyways uh, so <laughs> no okay so what what we are going to do here is we are going to do something as called double exposure and um, same thing is what i'm going to do is going to select this uh, normally what we'll do you will use this magic wand tool to select this object uh, press shift and select this one also so so i have this object selected and i'm going to Okay. Here we have this image, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another image in it. So we'll select another image. Here. Uh, yeah. We have another image here. So we have this trees. So to select the shape of the previous layer, what you have to do is you have to highlight that layer, whatever layer that you have. You have to highlight that layer. Press Control and click that layer. Once you once you press control and click layer, you'll get a selection of that layer alone. See, as you can see right now, it's a selection of that layer. And using that layer, you can cut the other layer also. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this layer. But there is one thing that you have to do. You have to inverse the selection to, to have a cutout of that one alone. So for example, just let me show you. Um, so go to select and uh, go to inverse or you can use control shift and i okay control shift and i and when you click delete see all you have is that image see in the shape of that and here you can uh, change the blending options do you know about different blending options that you have here the blending options over here have you learned about these blending options the normal dark, dark overlay, all these things. No, sir. Okay, if you haven't, then these are different blending options. This, this place is a different. No, sir. These are bl different blending options where you can have different kinds of effects over the previous layer. See, this this layer, right? Uh, you have this green layer right here, and what layer you have on top of that layer? So here you have different blending options. You have from normal dissolve. Uh, dissolve all these things what you can do is you can have this overlay effect and you'll have a different effect of it see at the back in the background you have a small uh, a, a tree but you have a, a, a doll in front of you so this these types of effects are called as double exposure effects and this uh, these blending options right these options can give you a very very mm, 
subtle effect or a very different effect for example uh you and saturation subtract the way to give you a horror horror like effect all these things you can experiment with these things this will give you your image is a drastic change lots of things you can do with this but you are, you have to do this on the topmost layer or it will, will not work and here you can re reduce your opacity if you want you can increase the opacity or you reduce the fill or depending on whatever you want okay so you you clear with this i give it a nice uh, overlay okay. yeah yes sir yeah good uh so this is about uh, double exposure and using different effects and uh, there is one thing called content aware fill i hope it is in um, it is in cs3 also uh, i hope it is there so what uh, what what the content aware fill does is that see for example i like this uh, let's let's take for instance that you like this background instead out of this or you have these um, when you take any uh, photo with your phone or accidentally when you save it with the watermark for example shot on poker x2 or something like that you have that watermark and it's ruining the photo uh, and you want to remove that what you can do is you can load it up onto photoshop uh, rasterize it layer uh, select that particular place so for example i have this uh, faith life logo right here okay i have this faith life logo right here and i'm going to edit I'm going to edit and there's something called content aware fill something called as content aware fill okay when i click on content aware fill that's all i have to do click on content aware fill it will start processing things and that's it see it's done so kindly repeat this yeah sure yeah, how sure. to remove yeah, this yeah sure yeah sure 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 so you have this image here. you have loaded your image right here you just uh, rasterize the layer select the layer with any selection tools which you have select whatever you want for example i'll select this one um i'll select this flame right here okay this flame i'm selecting this flame i'm going to image sorry not image i'm going to edit i'm going to content aware fill clicking on content aware fill wait for some time and uh, if you want to make any changes you can make changes you can add or you can delete stuff here i'm satisfied with so the output which option in edit which option in edit yeah edit content aware fill content aware fill okay okay content sorry. aware fill yes you can use that and uh, you can immediately erase it it will see as if nothing is there this one works on even photos different photos also it works on for example if you want to remove some people from the background you can do that but uh, most of the time you need a nice high resolution photo for example if i try with this there may be some kind of anomalies so let me show you this um okay this john wick photo i have here um okay uh, so for example i don't want this piece of uh, uh let's say if i if i don't want this piece of metal over here okay uh, what i have to do is i have to just uh rasterize it as usual rasterize it and uh, select this part and go to edit content of fill see uh, it doesn't do a great job with images because it's a low resolution photograph anyways we'll just work around it we'll add this part alone at this but sir this option is not available in cs3 content you don't have cs uh, content aware fill in cs3 man no sir no this option oh. is not there it's not uh, there so unfortunately i think only in cc they have started that option in uh, creative cloud because cs uh, stands for creative suite it is a earlier version uh, try to get your hands on uh, anything with cc photoshop cc uh, okay sir uh, for example photoshop see a photoshop uh, this is 2021 and 
pin try to get anything with cc uh, photoshop cc this will this will have these features because uh, the older tools it is possible but you have to do it manually these uh, these things are possible because you'll have uh, instead of this content of our fill you'll have something called the burn tool here the spot healing brush tool healing brush tool you have this patch tool you'll have yes. yeah the yeah. healing brush tool also can uh, do things like this so It does things like that. For example, you take this and you paste it over here, you'll get this. So, uh, if you want to raise a gun, you'll have this healing breast tool. Use that. Mace. There's some background voice disturbing. Yeah, just let me. Know. One, one. Yes, 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 ma'am. I'm on it. I'm on. When we click on that, the option is not there. But if yeah. I'm not mistaken, in edit when we go, yeah, there appears condense. Condense we get at the right hand side, and then there some option is there to remove that selected part as you showed in there. Yeah, yeah. Is one minute. Yes, some... Ria, can you reduce I, the volume, Ria? Ria. Uh, but I'm not sure yeah, that's the right option. Come here. I told you don't go play outside. Go, go play outside. Go. Sorry, ma'am. Uh, ma'am, can you please repeat that, ma'am? Condense. It, it has appeared. I one minute, sir. Condense. Condense. Only the condense. Right, right hand side. Right, it appeared in the right hand side. Context of our mood tool. It was the opacity and then some color. Okay, okay. And then oh yeah, that normal, normal and all that. And then when I went to. You you tried to remove that man. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I I will just share the screen if it is a prop if it is okay you let me know sir. Yeah yeah. The screen. Please share. I just. I tried just this because immediately I did not get any picture to try it out. Okay, ma'am. I okay. got this. this yeah, please share, please share. Yeah, I don't see the screen sharing option. Try now, ma'am. This is oh, okay. Coming up. Wait, wait. After clicking present now, what do I do, sir? You have to share your entire screen, man. Is it visible, sir? No, ma'am, it's not, ma'am. Yeah. It's not visible, ma'am. It's okay, sir. You proceed, please. Okay, ma'am. Okay, ma'am. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Thank you.
Okay, there is one website I would like to share with you. It's called uh, Coolers. I hope you know about it. If you don't know, please. Uh, uh, it's a very very good website. For example, Coolers. dot co. Okay, I'll post it in the chat window. <coughs> Coolers at CEO. See, for instance, you want to have, you want to design a certificate, or you want to design something nice, or you want to design some background, or you want to design a gradient, and you want some colors, nice colors, and you don't know the color combination. Uh, what colors comp complement each other? You go to this website, Coolers website. Okay, you go to the website, start the generator. Click on start the generator. Uh, it works on the uh, mobile phone as well as the computers. Okay, so what you have here is a selection of colors, like different colors you have here. And as you hit space, as you hit space, the colors keep changing. Can you see that? As you hit space, the colors change, and these colors complement each other when you use it in any uh, design that you have. Its space will be change. It will change everything. See, for example, if I like this particular palette, if I like this, see this blue, green, and this baby powder, all these things. If I like this, I can export this as a PDF or any image or anything. Okay. So I'm going to export this as a PDF. It can and name it as sample one. We export it. It will ask me to save the file. Save it. So right now here I have the whole different color combinations of how it can work out. See, blue, green, uh, kind of off white. Remember darker and orange, all these things. I can use this in my uh, whatever art that I'm going to use or whatever background that I'm going to design. I can use it. Here. For example, let me just quickly design a a layout for a certificate for you. And, uh, we'll use different shapes. I hope you're well well versed with shapes. See, so have ellipse tool or this custom shape tool. You can have all these things. So here, what I'm doing is I'm going to draw one. A shape, a triangle, okay. triangle here. Okay. okay, and then I'll draw another triangle over here like this. Using Alt, I can duplicate this. If I click on a particular layer, I can duplicate this layer. And one ellipse tool. Okay, see, so we have a small basic layout of our website or uh, for a certificate or whatever it is. We can use this. Um, okay, so we can use it for anything we want. So here we can have these colors. We can change these colors. For example, poly one, polygon one dot copy. If you have to go to these properties. You have this here, okay. Same thing. Go to this place. Keep it wide open like this. Select. Go to this. Immediately you can get the green there. Click on OK. See, it got the green there. And 
and uh, select the polygon. You can light, right click, click on polygon 1, polygon 1, double click this to get this window. Select something from outside, get this blue. See, I got this blue right here. Polygon 2, double click. Select, get the blue. Select, get the green. And uh, we get the orange for the last one. Ellipse. Double click. Get the orange. See, you can get, you can have this. You can change whatever shapes you want. You can have different types of things. See, the whole thing just took about like one minute to fix, including all the colors and all the shapes. You can change the shapes however you want. Like if it is too much, you can reduce it back to a small one. You can you can have this ellipse coming out like this. Or you can have something like that. See? This is how you can do different types of sort of because you can have you can you can play with the opacity also. And another thing I want to tell you about is called blending options. Blending options is your very good friend. I hope that you know at least a little bit of blending options. If you don't know, I'll just give you a small uh, rundown on what blending options are. Blending options are where you have this drop shadow effect and all these types of effects. So what, what we can do is we can right click this, go to blending options. Okay. Blending options. So I, ha I have blending options, the different types of blending options here. The most favorite blending option here is drop shadow. Okay. So which which one? So this one. I'm talking about this this part right here. See right here, you can you see this drop shadow? Okay. Drop shadow, when you click on drop shadow, you have all these types of options here. Lots of options here. You can work on it when you're free. Uh you can change the drop shadow over here, the size of the drop shadow, the spread of the drop shadow, you can change it over here. But you can also click on that shadow and you can see where it should be placed. So you can, you can place it over here. And you can have a small 3D like effect called. See, it, it, see I'm, I'm taking out the drop shadow. It looks flat. I'm bringing the drop shadow. It's look, it looks like 3D. You can reduce the size. You can, you can increase the spread if you want. And one tip that I can give you is normally drop shadow is like like this, like uh, in hundred. Please don't use hundred. It will you it look very very dark. Use like something around thirty five to forty. Okay, you'll have a subtle effect and it'll be very nice to look. At. And the drop shadow should not come outside. It should come inside, and uh, make sure that you follow the same angle wherever it is if you use global light it will do it for you but if you want to uh, change only a single uh, single drop shadow then you have to take out this global light and you can say change it see for example i'm putting it over here like this and click on ok you you find that there is a different uh, for example you have a 3d layer like and same thing you can do it for this one also select the layer go to blending options Drop shadow. You bring the shadow outside. You can bring the shadow outside here. Okay. You can bring the shadow outside. You'll find that it has a nice subtle 3D effect for it. Okay. Then you can add whatever you want to add. All these things. And uh, the here, this is ellipse right here. If you find this ellipse is too uh, distracting or it's not so good shape. You can always edit its points. See, for example, you have this direct selection tool right here. Direct selection tool. When you select this tool, you can have these points, and you can you can select the shape, change the shape. See, you 
you can change the shape like this you can do all these things with this lots of shapes you have see something like this you can do so this is about lot of things that you can do with certificates there are many things that you can do here and uh, um, there's so many things that you can learn in Photoshop, so many things that you can do in Photoshop. It is like uh, almost impossible to tell in one hour, one hour's time. So if you have any kind of request, you can send it through my email or anything. I'll just tell you, I'll show you how the steps to do or to get that effect, whatever it is. I'll, I'll share my email along with this, this chat window. If you have any kind of questions or anything, you can ask me through that email and you can... Uh, I'll send you stuff of how to do it. Okay. Uh, my email is theroidgmail.com. You can send it that hopefully I'll be able to solve all these things. So um Wimmel, Dr. Wimmel told me to even touch up on UI designing. UI designing is like uh, how you design different buttons, you define how uh, buttons are looking like all these things. So I just so due to the time constraint like I will just give you a small rundown of how buttons are. Okay, uh, you have different types of UI design. One thing is the thing which is famous right now are flat buttons. See, flat buttons are just uh, buttons like this. They have a small uh, 3D effect to it. For example, I have this rectangle button here. Blending options. I go to blending options. I just have ha, add a drop shadow to it. This time I won't give it a very big size. I give it a small one. I lightly make it look 3D. So see, this is a normal button. Okay. Uh, for example, if you want this button to look a little bit glossy if you want to be make this button look uh, like it it has some shine into it there's something that you can do some kind of trick that you can do for example you have your uh, select this rectangle button right here select this button rectangle button choose a layer on top of it a new layer on top of it select the brush tool the brush tool you select the hard round brush tool and uh, we'll just do one oh, like this sorry it's in purple And you can go to blending options and uh, if you go to bevel and emboss okay go to bevel and emboss it immediately turns into a um, rounded texture okay, you can play with bevel and emboss there's link depth to it create the size of it like a rounded size soften it And you see it is looking like a 3D button. If you have rounded, if you want to make it a bit rounded, select this one and you can increase the size. Increase the roundedness of this. It becomes into a rounded button. Okay. Okay. 
it becomes into a rounded button you can change all these things there's lots of things that you can do with this so if you have any kind of uh, request you can just let me know and i'll tell you how, what i can what we can do about that it's up to you please ask me and i'll uh, let you know any questions that you have or if you wanted to do this kind of that type then you don't know how to do it maybe like that anything so this one can you repeat again sir which one which which one do you want sir this one sir this one what you did not the button the 3d effect yes yes yeah, yeah. so you can create any kind of shape that you want for example let me take a custom shape um rounded rectangle to change its color to something a little bit brighter get a bit blue so we have a nice flat looking icon right here what we have to do is right click it right click go to blending options go to blending options go to bevel and emboss bevel and emboss adjust the depth so it looks 3d increase the size so it looks nice and soft if we want you can make it very soft or you can make it a little bit hard depends on what you want increase the size and to make it look even more uh it has depth add a small drop shadow to it small blur around the it can increase of opacity is very and see there you have it a 3d looking button yeah okay so yeah um any questions uh, dear learners i request you to please raise your queries if any not only whatever that uh, sir has covered you can ask anything that you wanted to know from photoshop please make use of mm -hmm. sir's expertise uh, actually dr dear learners i'm yeah. not Please, please press. Go ahead, sir. Actually, Doctor Vimal, I asked me to do two sessions, but uh, I couldn't do it because of my ailments. Uh, and Doctor Vimal himself knows that uh, these tips and tricks cannot be covered in one single hour. So, if you have, uh, and um, just because we have one hour, I don't know like where to start and where to end because there are so many things. If you only take this one uh, UI designs, you can. Uh, yeah, let's finish. Uh, so if you take every aspect there are so many things that you can do about it. even uh, changing the shape you know what whatever we um, shapes that we use right now right this vector shapes even that one is a whole new topic there's lots of tips and tricks if you can do that and uh, i request you to go learn see something get inspired by that uh, there is one website called there's many websites but there's one website called dribble okay d r i b b l you can uh, go to that website you can have lots of inspirations uh, you can get lots of inspirations of how you want to do and then see that effect and come back and do it in photoshop and uh, ajay ui designs if you want to transfer that into uh, some other or uh, some website you just export the jpg file and uh, wherever you want to use it in html or wherever 
ASU.NET or something, you just uh, add that as a button in uh, HTML, like image, SRC, background image, or something like that. Or you can create a GIF image, depends on what you want. If you're talking about, uh, we can also have design um, mobile interfaces, mobile phone interfaces, all these things you can design. But you need to know programming also. The designing part can be done in Photoshop, but importing that into the actual mobile phone interface needs a little bit of coding expertise. But it can be done. You can even do complete websites in Photoshop from scratch. You can do complete websites in Photoshop from scratch. So please feel free to ask me questions. I'll uh, let you know about this. So the puppet tool you told us, sir, it's yeah. not. Uh, we are not able. We are not able to do that one, sir, because we are sir, we are having a CS3 version. Yes, sir. It's a puppet tool is only available in uh, CC versions, sir. Creative Cloud versions. You you can find the demo uh, in online for Photoshop and you can download that sir. Photoshop CC you can download. I would like to add on to Dr. Jaj, uh, dear learners. See what we use is uh, CS3, and as he said, this is the advanced CS. I mean, CC is the advanced uh, one, so you can download uh, the uh, trial version. You can work for one month. Uh, if you are happy. If you have enough and more uh, to go with Photoshop, then you can purchase it if you want. Otherwise, you can you can ask your institution to purchase it. Okay, it is costly, so you can avail the trial version, as uh, Dr. Jaj said. Download it, and you can avail it for one month. Am I right, sir? Yes, yes, sir. Yes, Dr. Mumbai. Yes, Dr. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Why? Well, uh, yeah, uh, sir. One question by uh, I think uh, Hari. Yes, do sir. we have pages in Photoshop? Do we have pages in Photoshop? Pages in the sense of pages. I, I don't know what he means. Uh, in, uh, in, in, this, in Illustrator, we have artboards. Are you talking about artboards? Uh, hello, sir. Yes, Hi. yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, actually, I'm just comparing with Coral Draw, sir. Actually, okay, it has so... pages. Okay, sir. Okay, okay, okay. So, yeah, book work like. Yeah, yeah. If, book uh, yeah. if I'm doing software. browser edit uh, and all, yes, yes, sorry, sir. yes, yes, sir. So yes. I'm finding hard to switch in pages. Okay, so okay, so uh, in so, Photoshop recent version, you have something called artboards. Okay, uh, artboards, but that one won't be as uh, flexible as pages in Corel Draw. And the reason why they don't have okay. that support here is because they have a whole new software called InDesign for designing browsers and all these things. That's Adobe okay. InDesign. It's called Adobe InDesign and it's totally made for books and all these things. And uh, instead of uh, okay. that, you can go in for Illustrator also. Illustrator has something called Artboards and you can do multiple things on it, on a single file. Okay, sir. Yeah. Thanks. Welcome, sir. Mm -hmm. Dear participants, the attendance link is given in the chat. If you have no worries, then we shall call it a day by thanking Dr. Roy. Uh, before I wind, do you have any queries? Do you have any queries? Feel free to ask. Do you have any other query? Anybody, sir, any, anything, anything would you like to ask? Anything, anything. Sir, yeah, yeah. Regarding, sir. regarding exams, sir. Yeah, don't, uh, don't worry, dear. Uh, exams, you see what? I wanted to do it uh, maybe um, maybe on Wednesday, but many of them are uh, with the election duty. So I will announce it on Wednesday, okay? So that we shall have it in the next Saturday. Uh, it should be convenient for everyone. So we may have it in the next week. I'll inform you well in ahead. So in between, we have classes, sir? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have uh, two, three more classes we will have. Two classes, yeah.
Dr. Bimal, I would like to add to uh, Dr. Hari's, Mr. Hari's uh, question. Please, please, please go ahead. Uh, sir, there is one thing called uh, artboard, as I already told you. See, this is called artboard. Uh, create, go to layer, layer, new, artboard. And uh, when you click on OK, everything goes into that artboard. For example, this whole page goes into artboard. For example, you can use it as page one. The whole thing goes into this artboard. So, for example, if I hide the whole thing, goes off. You can add multiple artboards. You can add even one more artboard. Artboard two, you can add, and uh, you can add different things into that artboard. See, this one is artboard two. Here, you can add new images, new stuff, or you can even duplicate this. So, in that way, you can work with multiple pages. Uh, sir, uh, when we render finally, what will happen, sir? You have to save separate artboard, sir. Oh, as uh, artboard one, artboard two. Yeah, yeah, yes, yes, sir. You have to save separate. For example, you can hide uh, this, uh, hide this artboard, and you can print all. Uh, you can save only this artboard, or you can uh, hide this one, and you can print that one. You can do that, sir. Uh, if I if I take it as a PDF, it will be joining all the pages, sir. Uh, PDF I haven't worked yet, but you have to do. You have to export it. Separately as a JPG, and you have to join it using a PDF editor. Sir. Okay, sir. Sir, uh, one more doubt. Yes, sir. Uh, sir, is there an option called outline trace in uh, Photoshop, sir? Outline trace. There is one called posterize that looks exactly like outline trace, but not uh, as good as uh, Corel Draw. Uh, if I take uh, icon, that yeah. can be brought as a combined group layer. So that is that possible? That can be done in, in Illustrator, sir. It can be done in Illustrator. Adobe Illustrator, okay. there is one thing called Illustrator. It can be done in that. Uh, what is the tool, sir? Illustrator. Illustrator. No, no, no. Uh, in Illustrator, which tool it is? Uh, I'm not. I don't know for sure, sir. But uh, it can be done. Like I'll let you know, sir. I'll send the message to you, if possible. Sure. It's great of you, Hari. That was a, a good interaction. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Dr. George, also for the wonderful answers. And now, any anybody else would like to have any queries? Uh, see, my, my dear friends, as I told you, he's a real expert. You can ask anything that you wanted. To do it with Photoshop, you have tried and you whatever you thought in mind, whatever which is not taught, anything you can ask. So I give you. Regarding, yeah. Yes. Go ahead, please. Regarding movies, uh, how they will do this? The editing effects and all. Be by Photoshop or some other tools. Sir. They use After Effects for it, sir. After Effects and Premiere Pro for it, sir. For short effects and all, we can use Photoshop. Film and video option. So I'm not able to hear you properly, sir. Regarding that, the uh, short film, we can use uh, the film and media option to use the Photoshop. So uh, it is best advised that you use a separate uh, non-linear video editor for that, sir. Photoshop is not designed for video editing as uh, very in-depth video editing. It can do a little bit of changes here and there, but you should use some non-linear video editor. That would be a very good uh, option for you. There are lots okay, of sir. lots of free versions out out there also. Non-linear video editor. You if you use that, you will be able to do. Okay, okay, thank you. Bala, you can work on your yeah, titles, maybe by posters, no posters and titles. You can work with Photoshop. As I said, if you want to go for uh, motion picture, then you like to go for non-linear video editors. Okay, okay. Anybody else? Anybody else? Any others? So, can you show a little bit on much painting? Yes, ma'am. Uh, madam is uh, asking about smudge painting. Madam, uh, in what area you would like to know on smudge painting, madam? Shamila, madam? Actually, I had missed that uh, talk, but if this sir can explain a little bit how to do it. 
Mm-hmm. Could you please touch up on smudge painting, such smudge tools, smudge tool? Okay. Just for a minute. Yeah. before uh, the sir begins madam sharmila madam the video is also available uh, when you are free you can go through okay madam yes sharmila video yes. is, on, is available please go through okay sir will also touch upon a bit okay ma'am for you to work on a smudge tool you have to select the smudge tool over here uh this smudge tool but I don't know what uh, exactly you expect out of this smudge tool, man. Wow! Could you tell me, like, what effect do you want me to do? For example, uh, normal. Sir, same. Painting. Like, no, what to do? Like painting. Painting. Painting, sir. You wanted to look like uh, strokes of painting, man. This one. Yeah, yeah. Maybe at uh, the face alone, sir. Face alone, sir. Just one or two strokes. Make sure the Madam, your brush uh, size. It... Yeah, yes, yeah. Uh, so go ahead, sir. Please. Ma'am, make sure the brush size is a very uh, lesser size, ma'am. For example, they take select the brush, the smudge brush, a very very. small size brush and uh, do small small strokes like small strokes if you do small strokes like this it will start looking like a painting if you do la- long strokes you will uh, spoil the image so i'm doing like small strokes So we have this small strokes. We we'll, we can do it, man. This is how we have to do. Thank you. request you to please as i suggested already please go through the video you will get a little more clarity on this thank you sir thank you sir so it is now 8 uh, 6:15 uh, if you have any other queries you are requested to just uh, you know be in touch with dr george roy uh, he has given his uh, mail id to you it was a wonderful session uh, dr george roy sir has given a lot of techniques which could be used innovatively in photoshop if some of the options are not available in the version that we use but still you can you can get the exposure of uh, what sar is given you can make use and you can create interest and you can definitely use it use them use all these techniques in future when you have uh, advanced version he has also touched upon ui design he a uh, wonderful part is that uh, he has given us lot of websites which could be very very useful in designing thank you so much dr george i know that you are not doing well but still you have made it uh, for one and one, one hour and 15 minutes for the betterment of uh, the benefit of the participants and they are very happy with the with the session i could see wonderful feedback in the google form as well thank you so much dr george uh, god bless you and your family for the wonderful service that you have rendered Thank you, thank so, you much. so much. Thank you so much for giving me this opportunity, sir. Thank you, sir. Our pleasure, sir. Our pleasure, sir. So, dear participants, if you would like to have any queries, uh, you you are welcome to make it to Dr. George. Yeah, George, sir is going to be here. You can just give your uh, feedback even in the chat as well, so that it will be a compliment to Dr. George. Though it is given already in feedback form, you can also give him a compliment. in chat as well thank you and my dear learners 
wishing you and your family members a happy easter happy easter to you all god bless us all wish you the same sir thank you sir sir uh, rameswar says wonderful session ajay ta says interesting amazing session and so many other people have given their feedback thank you sir thank you so much thank you so much for having me thank you thanks ajay wonderful says one thanks and ajay sir, ajay is from wonderful. muskat sir ajay yeah yeah yeah, yeah. do you know yeah yeah do you know him say first we know yeah 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 the international yeah. Yeah. Doctor? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. This is Mani Vannan. Sir, hi, sir. Mani, sir. Uh, sir, super, sir. Thank this you, sir. Very well. Thank you, sir. Fantabulous, sir. <laughs> There's nothing that you don't know, sir. <laughs> I don't know anything, sir. Sir, Vanilla, man. Yeah, thank you, Vanilla, man. Thank you, man. Sir, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, yeah. sir. Thank you. That is him, Phi Krop. Uh, yeah, Darik Shim. Am I correct? Uh, am I pronouncing your name correctly? Darik Shim. Darik. Oh, I... The participant says, "Wonderful session." Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. We shall call it a day. God bless us all. Thank you so much, Manish sir. Thank you very much for having spent your time on holidays. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. George. Thank you. Please take care. Yeah, Sunita, ma'am. Thank you, ma thank you Vimal, sir. Please take care of your health. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Bye-bye, sir. Thank you, sir.